Today, we're tackling one of those everyday curiosities that you've probably seen a hundred times, but never stopped to question. You're sitting in your car, maybe in traffic, or just about to start your drive, and you glance at the dashboard. Right there, staring back at you is your speedometer, and it goes up to 220, 240, maybe even 260 kilometers per hour. And yet, your modest city car, your Toyota Vios, Honda Jazz, or Ford EcoSport couldn't dream of hitting those speeds even if you dropped it out of a plane. So, what gives? Why are speedometers calibrated so high, often well beyond what the vehicle is capable of achieving? At first glance, it feels like automotive overkill, like giving someone a ruler that measures up to 100 meters when all they ever measure is paper. But as with many design decisions in engineering, there's more under the hood. So buckle up, because we're going deep into the logic, history, and psychology of the mysteriously overconfident speedometer. Right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start by laying down the basics. Most passenger vehicles on the road today are limited, either mechanically or electronically, to top speeds in the range of 160 to 200 kilometers per hour. That's more than enough for highways, and in most places, completely illegal anyway. And yet, speedometers regularly show maximum speeds of 220, 240, or even 260 kilometers per hour. You don't need to be a car expert to realize that these numbers are just optimistic. It's not just sports cars or muscle cars that have these numbers either. Even compact hatchbacks and small sedans, cars whose engines sound like they're begging for mercy at 130, have speedometers that boldly go where they'll never venture. It's like wearing a watch that goes down to the deepest ocean trenches when the most diving you do is washing your hands. Why? Let's be real for a second. Part of this is good old-fashioned marketing. Think about it. If you're trying to sell a car, especially to someone who isn't a mechanical engineer, the speedometer might seem like an unconscious status signal. A gauge that reads 260 kph looks faster than one that tops out at 180. It doesn't matter that the engine can't take you there. It's the illusion of performance, the suggestion of power. This tactic is subtle but effective. Even when two vehicles share the same engine platform, manufacturers might adjust the dashboard aesthetics to make one model seem sportier or more premium. A car buyer who sees that 240 gauge might feel like they're getting a more robust machine, even if under the hood, it's the same humble four-cylinder engine. It's marketing dressed as design, and it works. There's another side to the story that's far less about flash and far more about practicality. Standardization. Car manufacturers don't build a unique dashboard for every single trim level and regional market. Instead, they often develop components that can be used across multiple models in a lineup, sometimes even across different brands under the same parent company. So if a car platform is shared between, say, an entry-level model and a high-performance variant, the speedometer unit might be identical in both. It's simply more efficient and cost-effective to use the same cluster across the board. That means your grocery getter might end up with the same 240 gauge as its turbocharged sibling, even though it's not breaking any speed records. This is especially common in global platforms. A car that's sold in both Europe and Asia might need to accommodate different speed regulations, measurement units, KMH versus MPH, and customer expectations. Rather than engineer a different display for every scenario, manufacturers create one that covers all the bases. 
meaning it can register speeds well beyond what any one country's roads legally allow. Speaking of legalities, there's also a regulatory layer to this whole speedometer mystery. In many regions, vehicle standards require that speedometers not only display speeds up to the car's maximum potential, but also include a safety margin above that. That way, if the vehicle is modified, going downhill, or has some other condition that increases its speed, the speedometer can still give an accurate reading. On top of that, accuracy tolerances are part of the regulations too. In places like Europe, speedometers are legally required to never show less than the car's actual speed, but they can show more. That means the needle might overestimate how fast you're going, especially at higher speeds. To build that margin in, speedometers need extra room. A 200 kmh car might have a 240 kmh gauge just to meet that tolerance range. Now here's where it gets really interesting. There's a psychological element to this that might seem a little contradictory. While part of the inflated speedometer is about looking fast, another part is about feeling calm. Picture this. You're driving at 100 kilometers per hour and your needle is pointing just below the halfway mark on the dial. Subconsciously, that feels comfortable. There's more space above you, a sense of margin. Now flip that. What if your car's top speed was 120 and your needle was already hovering near the edge every time you got on the expressway? That could create unnecessary stress or anxiety. A speedometer that leaves plenty of room above your cruising speed makes the driver feel more in control, even if it's a visual illusion. And when drivers feel more in control, they're less likely to make poor or panicked decisions behind the wheel. Some experts even argue that this perceived buffer zone might contribute to safer driving habits, at least in theory. You don't feel like you're pushing the car to its limit just because you're doing 110 on the freeway. It's an odd intersection where psychology, safety, and design quietly shake hands. So the next time you glance at that speedometer and wonder why it dares to suggest you could break land speed records, just know that it's a blend of practicality, psychology, and marketing. It's not a glitch or an overestimation of your car's power. It's the result of layered decisions, ones that take into account regulations, manufacturing costs, customer perception, and even your emotional comfort. The numbers on your speedometer aren't a promise, they're a canvas. And while you may never get anywhere near that 240 mark, it's there to balance design expectations, legal needs, and production realities. Kind of poetic in its own way. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.